Hey everyone, this is Slyman. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the Explore Scientific ED-102 Carbon Fiber Apochromatic Refractor. This is a uh, really versatile scope with some pretty cool features and it can do a bunch of different things. Uh, so I'm excited to jump into this one and we'll get going right now. The first thing that really took me by surprise when I opened the telescope for the first time was just how small it is. Normally an 80 millimeter refracting telescope is considered the king of portability and, and being lightweight really. And when I opened the 102, I was shocked to just see how small it really was. With a collapsed dew shield, it's only about 24 inches long. Uh, with the extendable dew shield, uh, it only comes out to about 27 inches. So it's still really, really short. And with this beautiful carbon fiber body, uh, it's only seven pounds, which is crazy. Uh, it's so light, um, really portable. It makes you want to just jump up almost a whole inch from 80 millimeters and just get yourself a 102 when you're, you know, going out to a dark sky site or if you just are going on vacation and you want to bring along a small little scope. It's almost like you might as well just get a 102 because they're so small. Um, it's super portable, like I said, and does have a, uh, a nice extendable dew shield on it. Um, Explore Scientific also includes a carrying handle um, and, and rings, which is, is standard. Um, also included with the telescope is uh, extension tubes for the focuser. I find that you only need to use about one. Uh, it does come with two extension tubes. Um, they're just threaded to go into the focuser. And then it also comes with a two inch 99% uh, dielectric uh, carbon fiber diagonal. Um, I'll talk about this diagonal a little more later. The ED-102 carbon fiber does utilize the apochromatic triplet design, or otherwise known as an apo. Um, basically, it uses three lenses to correct for three wavelengths of light, those being red, green, and blue, and it brings them all to a focus. And what that does is it eliminates chromatic aberration. Uh, chromatic aberration is uh, basically secondary color that you don't want um, in a two-lens telescope or an acromat, or, a, or acro for short. Um, those two lens systems only bring two wavelengths usually to focus, and that would be red and blue. So green is not being brought into focus, and so an out of focus green will kind of give you a lot of weird colors. And so it's really nice to have a triplet design where it fixes all three of those wavelengths. So you get a really clean image or a nice clean view with no weird color um, issues going on. Uh, Explore Scientific does also coat this with EMD coatings. Um, if you're using a telescope to gather photons, you might as well gather as many as you can. Um, and the EMD coatings obviously provide maximum uh, transmission of light through the glass. Uh, that stands for Enhanced Multilayer Deposition. The telescope is F7, so it's not terribly fast, um, but it's not terribly slow either. Um, it's 102 millimeters, or basically 4 inches. Um, focal length is 714 millimeters, so it's a you know mid-range telescope. It's not doesn't have the focal length power of a, a Schmidt Cassegrain, um, but it's right around a good Newtonian, and so it, it uh, gives a nice, pleasant field of view, uh, not too wide, not too uh, zoomed in, and so if that's what you're looking for, a mid-range telescope, um, uh, a refractor really is awesome. There's no secondary mirror or anything, so you get a lot of contrast in them and they're really designed well. I really like the Explore Scientific Finder Scope bases. Um, they're actually really unique. You do not see this base uh, very much. And I'll be honest, a lot of people don't like this base because they can't use their normal Finder Scope shoes to, to fit in them. Um, but I'm actually the opposite. I really like this base because it touches the Finder Scope bracket in two places. And that provides a lot of stability to your finder scope or your guide scope. And if you're doing astro imaging, that stability is essential. That's the main reason people switch to an off-axis guider is because they, um, they want the stability and they don't want their you know, guide scope wobbling and to lose a guide star. Well, when you're touching the bracket in two places and additionally the, the actual finder scope mount, has six points of contact rather than three, um, the guide scope is gonna have a lot more stability. And so this has six thumb screws, a typical finder base only has three. Um, the guide scope is gonna be much more stable or the finder scope for that matter as well. Speaking of astrophotography, um, this is basically 
uh, what your image would look like, um, the field of view that is, if you're using the 102 carbon fiber scope um, with just a standard APS-C size sensor DSLR. Um, this is the Sunflower Galaxy, so it's pretty wide field on that. Um, but if you go to an object like um, M45, which is the Pleiades, um, you can see that it fits up most of the field of view. It actually looks pretty good. Um, 714 millimeters is a nice field of view for a lot of the nebulae and open star clusters. Um, Orion is going to be um, pretty, pretty full. Um, you probably can fit all of it um, if you get your camera orientation the right way, but it's not going to be um, any real wide field of Orion if that's what you're shooting for. As you probably know, I am a big proponent of carbon fiber bodies on telescopes. And, you know, not only is carbon fiber super strong, but it's incredibly lightweight as well. So usually when a telescope company offers two body materials like aluminum or carbon fiber, usually I'll pay the extra amount to get the carbon fiber. Uh, as I said before, this only weighs in at seven pounds with a finder scope, a diagonal, and an eyepiece you're probably going to look at about 11 or 12 pounds. With a guide scope and a camera, it'd still be about 11 or 12 pounds. So it's really, uh, really lightweight. Um, and it, aesthetically, it just looks incredible. It's very beautiful. Um, when it's under the light, it enhances its features uh, quite a bit. And the whole thing just looks so striking. You can't help but look at it. Explore Scientific also includes a 2-inch 99% reflectivity diagonal. Uh, dielectric coated. Uh, it's a really nice diagonal. It's, it's, I mean, a diagonal. There's not a ton to say about it. It does have a carbon fiber body though, which is pretty nice. Um, it looks really good on the aluminum version or the carbon fiber version. Uh, what's really cool though is the one and a quarter inch adapter um, has a compression ring tightening system so you won't mar your one and a quarter inch eyepieces. And the two inch um, receptacle also has a compression ring tightener as well so you won't um, mar your two inch eyepieces. So really the whole telescope won't mar anything. The diagonal itself won't be marred because the telescope focuser has a compression ring, ring as well. So the entire system is tightened with compression rings. Um, it's really nice that Explore Scientific includes a two inch diagonal, um, a, a quality one that is, and you're ready to observe with it right away. Like I said, it's 99% reflective and gives really good views. All right, guys, well, that's my review of the Explore Scientific ED-102 carbon fiber airspace triplet apochromatic refractor. And yes, I realize that was quite the mouthful. <laughs> um, fun little telescope if you're in the market for a 102 millimeter or a four inch refractor. Um, it's probably one option that you want to consider. Uh, the carbon fiber body does keep the weight down. FCD-1 glass provides um, nice views, lots of contrast, and it is pretty good for astrophotography as well. So uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope again that you enjoyed it and have a good one.